This video is about solving quadratic equations using something called the square root property. Um, the square root property, if you can use it, um, really makes solving your quadratic equations um, a lot easier. Um, and so it's a nice thing to know how to do. <clears throat> so the first one here is just x squared equals 9. So this displays the, um, the square root property or square root property very well. And so the way that you would unsquare something is by taking the square root on both sides. So we're going to take the square root on both sides of this equation. And the square root of x squared is just going to be x. And the square root of 9 is 3. The one catch with this is that when you do take the square root on both sides of an equation like this, you do need to do plus or minus. Um, we don't know if we got this 9 because we squared a positive 3 or if we got this 9 because we squared a negative 3. And so you need to consider both of those situations. And so x would be equal to positive 3 or negative 3. In our next example, we have x squared plus 20 equals 0. So anytime you don't have an x term in there, um, you can use this property. And so we could subtract 20 from both sides. And we get x squared is equal to negative 20. And then to unsquare the x, we would take the square root on both sides, giving me x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 20. And so negative 20 is not a real number, but it is a complex number. And we will be considering um, complex answers for our the solutions to our quadratics. <coughs> So this square can be simplified, so it's plus or minus. And we can rewrite 20 as negative 1 times 4 times 5. And so the square root of negative 20 simplifies down to 2i times the square root of 5. And so again, there are really two answers here. We have positive 2i times the square root of 5 and negative 2i times the square root of 5. Okay, so just remember that writing this <coughs> means that you have these two solutions. In our next example, we have 2x squared plus 72 equals 0. So we need to get this x squared by itself first, and then we would take the square root on both sides of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 72 from both sides. And we get 2x squared is equal to negative 72, and then divide both sides by 2. That gives me x squared is equal to negative 36. And then take the square root on both sides of our equation. That gives us x is equal to plus or minus, And the square root of negative 36 is 6i. So again, it's really important that you remember to do this plus or minus thing when you're um, taking the square root on both sides of an equation. In our next example here, so this one is a little bit different. So we have this quantity being squared that's equal to 25. Well, we can still unsquare this quantity by taking the square root. And so we're going to take the square root on both sides again, um, like we were doing before. Okay, so we're going to take the square root of both, si both sides of this. And so this square root and this square basically cancel each other out. And we're left with x minus 5. And it's equal to the square root of 25. Remember, when you do the square root on both sides, you have to remember to do plus or minus. And the square root of 25 is 5. And then we're going to add 5 to both sides. And so we get x is equal to 5. And then it's plus or minus 5. Oops. And so this means that we have 5 plus 5, or 10, and 5 minus 5, which is 0. So 10 and 0 are our two solutions here. And you need to make sure that you do this these operations. So you have to make sure you do 5 plus 5 to get the 10, and 5 minus 5 to get the 0. Don't leave your answer like this. You don't want to leave it as 5 plus or minus 5. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and try this example, x plus 3, the quantity squared is equal to 11. It's just like the last one that we did. 
Okay, so the first thing that we would want to do is take the square root on both sides of this. And the square root and the square cancel each other out, so we get x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 11. And then we would subtract 3 on both sides. And we get x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 11. And you can't simplify this any further because you can't take the square root of 11, so you don't need to do anything else. In my math lab, it's probably going to want you to enter two answers separately. Negative 3 plus the square root of 11, comma, 3 um, minus the square root of 11. Negative 3 minus the square root of 11. Whoops, I missed. <clears throat> and I think this is our last example here. Um, Quantity 5x minus 3 squared is equal to negative 48. So again, take the square root on both sides of this equation. And we would get 5x minus 3. And the square root of negative 48, so we can simplify that. 48 is 16 times 3, and it's negative, so it's going to be 4i times the square root of 3. And don't forget your plus or minus. And then we would want to add 3 to both sides. That gives me 5x is equal to 3 plus or minus 4i times the square root of 3. And then divide both sides by 5. And so we get x is equal to 3 plus or minus 4i times the square root of 3 over 5. And so this is really two answers. We have 3 plus 4i times the square root of 3. over 5 and 3 minus, oops, 3 minus 4i times the square root of 3 over 5. And that's it for this lecture. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.